Yeah, sis and tell, sis and tell A whole lot of talk about a whole lot of nothing Amanda does stand up, Allison's on TV And when they hop on the phone, it's the place you want to be Sis and tell Sis and tell Hey, Allie. Hey, man. What's going on? Aaron and I finally tried the best Mexican restaurant in Atlanta. I am so glad that sentence ended with the best Mexican restaurant in Atlanta because I was getting a little nervous of what (laughs) anything else would have been awkward. That's actually the name of a sexual position. (laughs) (laughs) Ole. Okay. I know you've been looking for the best Mexican restaurant in Atlanta, and I also saw I think you posted it because I was laughing that your best friend, Joel, wrote the best Mexican restaurant in Atlanta (laughs) was on Buford Highway and closed 12 years ago or something funny. so sad. He basically described it, though, like Chuck E. Cheese. It was (laughs) not that Chuck E. Cheese is good, but it was like so fun and there were so many things going on. So So the best Mexican, (laughs) where'd you find it? But he also says the best Mexican is El Tesoro, which is actually right by them. But it's everyone's been talking about this place and it's one of those restaurants where you got to wait in a long line but you can like get drinks while you're waiting i love that and then you know they call your name and you come pick up your food and it had this huge outdoor space and giant connect fours which i love connect four and so we were waiting in this really long line it took about 15 20 minutes and we keep on hearing people's names called And as we're getting closer, I said to Aaron, I think I'm going to tell them my name is Foxy Lady instead of. (laughs) (laughs) And I don't know if, and and by the way, everyone's giving their names. No one's giving monikers, but there used to be, what was it like Fuddruckers or Fuddruckers? I was just going to say Fuddruckers was that hamburger joint where you had to give your name. And my friend, Danny Cohen, who dated my friend, Stacey Steinberger, shout out in case they or happen to be listening, he would always give, it, he was like the Simpson version of giving the names at the bar where they'd call the names and we're like, oh my God. Like one time it was like, Mr. Dingleberry, Mr. Dingleberry, <laughs> your, your food is ready. And we're looking around going, who the heck is Dingleberry? And Danny looks at us. We're like, Danny, stop it. He's like, sorry. He actually, he never said sorry. He never said sorry. But Fuddruckers was known, like, you could give, like, a funny name. Everyone did it. But this was not happening at this restaurant. (laughs) This was clearly Chad, Mary, Pat. Yes. Lots of errands, coincidentally. So, but Foxy Lady, do you know the backstory to Foxy Lady? I don't think so. A personal backstory for you? Yeah. I have a a backstory. And it's that when Daddy, so first of all, our dad. Was that your email address? No, that was Superbug. Oh. That was my first email address. Okay. Um, anyway, but no. So Foxy Lady was my moniker when Daddy had gotten a CB for the Suburban. Right. And right. we would use it on road trips. He would use it on road trips, I guess, to communicate with truckers about traffic. Let's and then be we clear. Would... We had a CB for the for the station wagon, for the wood paneled station wagon. You were just too young to remember because I was not cool enough to have a... Uh, a name like Foxy Lady as my CB <laughs> handle. Mine was Little Chestnut or something <laughs> stupid like that. <laughs> something really PG. Not even right. PG. I didn't even deserve a P. It was just G rated. I was like seven or eight. And to me, like a, a CB moniker was Fox, like for a truck driver would be Foxy Lady. Like that for made sure, sense. For sure. You were ahead of your time as always. I was, I was like, breaker, breaker, one nine. This is Foxy Lady. How's traffic up there? So... <laughs> <laughs> So this would become, this was like always like the name I would use in those situations where we could give names at restaurants. So, so fast forward, you know, (laughs) you're now at the Fuddruckers version of the Mexican restaurant. Yes. Right. No one's giving those names. We get up to the counter, we order. And she said, which name would you like to give? I say, I don't say Foxy Lady. I say Amanda. Aaron says Foxy Lady. So whatever happened that's happened. shocking that yeah he would say it instead of <laughs> I was that has already thrown me for a loop okay so I I, I changed my mind but it, what was said was said and so we give we have drinks we go sit down we're waiting for our order all of a sudden they say foxy lady Amanda so, <laughs> so, they've come by <laughs> so 
I start walking up to go get our food. And as I do so, the entire restaurant erupts in cheer and uh-uh. clapping. No. Yes. Wait, like, are you sure it's for you or was there a birthday party? <laughs> so, so I start like doing this, like, I'm like for me. And I start like waving like I'm in a beauty pageant. And I was like, oh, thank you. Thank you. And I go up and I get our food and we're eating and it's delicious. And we ate probably the hottest salsa I've ever eaten in my life. And um, we're about 15, 20 minutes into eating. And I hear this cheering again. And I realize there are three outdoor flat screens and there's a soccer game going on. <laughs> so I said to Aaron, well, that's embarrassing. I thought they were cheering for me. Obviously, it was for the soccer game. But then I go back up to go get something. And there's this guy in line behind me, and he taps me on the shoulder and said, you must be the most popular person at this restaurant. And I was like, oh, are you talking about the cheering for Foxy Lady? And he said, yeah. And I said, are you sure that was not for the (laughs) soccer game going on? And he said, no, everyone was cheering for you. And I was like, oh, success. (laughs) That is awesome. Was he, was, would he be willing to put that in writing to make right? sure? Yeah. <laughs> but that moment where I was like, oh, man, I have such an ego that I thought everyone was cheering for me. But they were. I wasn't going But crazy. I was right. My ego was justified in this situation. They love me. My, my fans adore yeah, me. They love me. It's that same feeling I had when I was five and the DJ at Todd's Bar Mitzvah called me up to come dance on the dance floor and he's like amanda come and show us your dance moves and i was like me what all right okay so my only famous restaurant story where i was the center of attention i'm not sure if you've heard this and i i can't be a thousand percent sure it actually happened but it's stuck- <laughs> <laughs> i'm pretty sure it did because it's stuck in my brain and this is well this first part will say you'll say really mommy took me i'm not sure if anybody else was there but definitely took me to crystal crystal hamburger to eat and we went inside but then we didn't even do drive through and if you know our parents like they never took us to crystal like that was not one of those places on the you know the usual stomping ground so took me to crystal at the time there was a crystal jingle that was fairly simple it was just crystals what you're hungry for that's it and for and some think- reason yes I think we need to explain that crystal is like white castle right for anybody somebody- living outside the yeah. south yeah it's those mini hamburgers in a box that cost like 10 cents and probably have... They're steamed. They're 0.09% actual meat. Yeah, whatever they are. So we go in. It's like in my in my you know memory, it is packed for lunch. I might have been six or seven. I'm you know, just short enough to kind of like be behind mommy. And for some reason, I just stood out in the middle of like... The aisles where people are, not even aisles, but the lines where people are waiting to get their food. And I put my hands above my head and I screamed at the top of my lungs, Crystal's what you're hungry for. And then everybody looked at me and I went back to hiding behind mommy. And I don't even know if she even blinked because she's probably so used to us. But in my memory, there is no cheering. Sadly, there were, <laughs> there were no adoring fans. <laughs> Nobody came up to me and said, you you must be the most popular kid in this restaurant. That's it. And I don't know if I've eaten at Crystal since then. I think that's, <laughs> I've had a little bit of PTSD. I'd like to know who decided to steam meat, first of all, because that's how. <laughs> Probably the that's same the... person who invented Spam. I mean, that, who thought that was a good idea? But that was their differentiator. It was like, first of all, I feel like they invented the sliders, Right. Because they're really tiny little hamburgers. Yeah, yeah. And it was, is the meat steamed or is the bread steamed? There was something yes. that was steamed. I think it's all steamed. Ew. Why would you, I just don't even, like steamed meat, there's nothing grilled, yeah. char grilled. Yeah. That sounds delicious. So now I can't remember, but I had a conversation with someone. So do not quote me if you're if you're deciding that this is legitimate. But we were talking about crystals um, and maybe even White Castle and that they did, they sort of did this. Um, like economic study, I think the restaurant itself, of what it would cost, like how much was a crystal 
how much was a burger, a plain burger, and how much was a cheeseburger? And how much would someone be willing to pay in terms of an upcharge for just a cheeseburger? And they found that people were willing to pay a lot just to have cheese on their tiny steam burger. And in fact, they could make much more money, right, net revenue off of a cheeseburger than a hamburger. And they really were just selling the cheese, which didn't cost them anything. Because it's not even real cheese. It's I doubt cheese. it. I mean, yes. Which, ugh. Hydrated, so. hydrogenated soy oil or whatever it is. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and plastic. Ugh, gross. Oh, that's it? That's your... <laughs> that's it. That's it. That's it. That's, that's my fun fact of the day. Yeah. So I like to go... I used to love to go to Wendy's, especially in high school. Because I remember... Too. I remember driving myself there, and I remember I had um, Dave Thomas, who was a creator of Wendy's, was also on the tray liners, and they had his little story along with his picture. And at some point, I cut out the picture because it was the exact size of the picture on your driver's license, and I stuck it onto my license underneath the, cl- the clear window, and I would <laughs> show it to them. <laughs> when, That's when I would funny. Go, I'd go buy stuff, and I'd be like, hi, I'm Dave Thomas. And they always thought I was very funny, but they never gave me a discount. They never got I, anything free? Okay, yeah. if you're a true Wendy's fan, then answer I this. Yes, answer I this. do. What? I Stop. Hold on. I'm gonna see if right. <laughs> what do true Wendy's aficionados dip their french fries in? A frosty. You are correct. Yes, everybody knows that. And a frosty. Gosh, I haven't had a frosty about as long as I had a crystal. Totally worth the tummy issues that I would. <laughs> <laughs> totally, totally worth the overdose of lactose that one encounters when having a frosty because it really is. It's like five milkshakes in one because it's so thick. It's so dense, and there's no straw that can handle the frosty. But that's why the the spoon straw. What would you call that? The spraw. Spraw. The that sounds like a bra. That sounds yeah. like a spoon bra. The, the straw. The strewn. strewn. The strewn. the strewn. I like or strewn. the straw. Yeah, the strewn yeah. is imperative. Um, and you could also, you know, you almost could break a French fry. If it wasn't a hot and crispy one, your French fry would break off in there. Now, that's, I do not recommend that, but that's all we like did. French fries that, and, and Frosties. That existed. The dipping your salty French fry in the chocolate Frosty existed before chocolate covered pretzels. I I'm, not sure, say, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if it first. predated. <laughs> I'm not sure if it predated. But it definitely... Um, is is a reminder of how much people love salty and sweet together. So that's I, no surprise. I have done like a survey, by the way, on Facebook of who has done this. And it's not regional. It's national. Really? It is a national phenomenon. And it's so interesting that, I mean, but someone had to be the first person to dip their fry in their Frosty, and then that caught on, and they told someone who told someone who told someone. It's true word-of-mouth marketing, yeah. which now there's agencies that specialize in word-of-mouth marketing. Now they want people to share that stuff, quote-unquote, organically, but they plant the seed. It's a, like a whisper campaign. Yeah. Do you know Do you know about whisper campaigns? Are people whispering? <laughs> I don't know. I only they're advertising and hoping people overhear it and think it's a secret, but then they tell everybody because everybody loves a good secret. Right. The and the only reason why I know whisper campaigns is from the movie um, The Muppets Take Manhattan. <laughs> and they had a whisper campaign. I know guerrilla marketing. That's the opposite of a whisper campaign. Right. No, this is whisper where you're supposed to like, did you hear that Amanda Marks is coming to town and she's going to be performing comedy? There are only a limited number of tickets. And then, you know, it catches on that way. I don't even know if it's a real thing, a whisper campaign. But Oh, I had something else else very exciting to tell you. Speaking of restaurants, we were um, out of town and um, we went to this restaurant I'd never been to. So, of course, I like to look up the menu just to see what the options are. And I noticed, you know, the site had plentiful sides, including Brussels sprouts, which I love, and French fries, which I am mm. addicted to. So as we ordered our meal, I, I didn't see fries on the menu that, you Ooh. know, the, the QR code we had to scan, which is the new way of getting the menu at these restaurants. And I just said to the waiter, you know, any chance you have fries? And he like stops and looks at me and winks and says... Yes, they're off menu. Well done. <gasps> and I'm like, oh, I got a secret menu item and I didn't even mean to. And I go, and I just played it off. I go, 
yep, I thought so. And he walked away, and Alan's like, you knew they were off menu? I was like, no, I didn't know they were off menu. That's so weird. They were on the old menu, and they weren't on the new menu. So I came across as looking like a local who knew her stuff. Why would they take... That's like the most basic it's a thing. Very weird. It's like <laughs> Starbucks taking coffee off the menu and you're saying, right. do you have like just plain coffee? We do, but it's off menu. <laughs> That's Good like saying, call. Can I get a lemon slice to go with my water? And we're like, ah, oh, how did you know? That's off menu. That's our secret menu. Lemony water. I will say, though, if it was meant to make me feel good, it worked. It made me feel like I was in the know. But you're right. Like. They're just French fries. It's not like I asked for sea bass and it was a steak place. So, yeah. I have to say there's weird things that that make me feel good and feed into my ego. And one thing that happens at a restaurant, which I feel like is like one of the most generic things uh, uh, wait staff can say to you is great choice. (laughs) (laughs) And I know they're saying that to everyone. Excellent. Excellent. But when, yeah. but when they say that to me, I'm like, really? Thank you. Because I'm feeling really insecure about my life choices lately. Yeah. And I'm glad I can at least go to a restaurant and know that they will say great choice to me. And I will be like, thank God I'm making a good choice about something, even if it is a yeah. French fries on the secret menu. <laughs> See, in my experience with Alan and even Abe, our middle one is, is very similar where they've pretty much honed in on like one or two my items and they want the waiter to organically come up with like those are his or her two favorite items and then to decide between them so i'll say well what do you recommend on the menu and then the waiter or waitress will go on and name like six different items none of which are their top two and they're like uh might i recommend the pork loin it's delicious tonight or the linguine with clam sauce is divine or if you do love fish uh our salmon spectacular and then they're like yeah i'll have the fried chicken (laughs) (laughs) So that must make the wait staff feel so that. terrible. Yes. Like they've just gone on and on about their top three to five choices and they pick none of them. That's so awkward when that happens. This happened to me at Starbucks where I really wanted to try some sort of cold drink that had almond milk in it. And I asked, I asked them, I'm like, are those good? And they're like, nope. And I was like, <laughs> crap. So why well, do they really... serve something if the, even the people who work there don't, don't like them? And I was like, well, do you even drink almond milk? And they're like, nope. And I'm like, all right, so you're not a good person to ask. I'm going to just get it. But then it's like awkward, right? It's so awkward. I think there's something about hearing with the asking the the, um, server what you want or what their favorite things are. There's something about hearing it out loud that's that's like maybe they'll make it sound more delicious than it reads on the menu. Did I tell you about Arthur's um, training when he was working at Copper Mountain this past year about no. the customer service training. Oh, no. You're going to love this. So he tells us all about, so our oldest son, who's who's been working out west, um, spent six months at a ski resort um, doing lift operations, and they had pretty, you know, pretty intense customer service training because that's a big part of their, their culture. So he says one of the training um, modules they use, he said, is called Give, give Them the Pickle. And I said, Give them the pickle. That, oh, that sounds, doesn't sound good. I'm not sure you can say that in the year 2021. I'm just saying. <laughs> oh, right. So give them the pickle. So I'm like, what is it? He goes, well, they showed us this whole video and he's sort of describing it. And that wasn't good enough for me. So I went down a little rabbit hole. And is it an acronym? It's not. It's a true story. So, and it goes back to a restaurant that is very near and dear to my heart. I don't know if you remember it, but it's called Farrell's. Do you remember Farrell's at Brookwood Mall? No. Oh, did they have, did they, gosh. wait, did they serve like ice cream sundaes, like yes. crazy ice cream sundaes? Yes, where they'd come out and they'd bang a drum and it was yeah. like a 15 scoop crazy ice cream extravaganza. Uh, do you, oh, I do remember it. Yeah. And they had, they had like the old, old time candy, like the dots on the paper that you ate half the paper oh. just to get the dot and, mm. you know, the long licorice and things like that. Well, it really is. I think it started primarily, though, as a hamburger place and also serves shakes and all these crazy ice creams. And so 
there is a story told, and who knows, this is what Mr. Farrell tells when he would do all of these training sessions, that um, there is a, a gentleman who was a regular at one of their Farrell's locations, like went there four or five days a week to get burgers. And every time he ordered a hamburger, he would always order extra pickles on the side because, you know, why not? I love extra pickles. So one day he walks in, this is happening, he's been going for years. So he goes in, orders his burger, extra pickles. And the waiter says or waitress says to him uh yes sir well um uh i I think i'm gonna have to charge you for the extra pickles they're they're you know a a quarter extra or something he says oh no i come in here you know you're, you're new she was new um i come in here all the time and you probably don't realize this but i always order extra pickles and they always just give them to me so you know i'm just i'm just letting you know she goes well, I don't think I can do that. I really, you know, she's been trained a certain way. He says, no, look, you can go ask the manager. He he knows me, whatever. So she goes in the back, she comes back. She goes, yeah, we can give you the extra pickles, but it's going to be a quarter. So he got so mad. He said, you can take your pickles and you can take your burger and I'm going to take my quarter and my business and I'm not coming back here. And so the guy ended up writing to corporate headquarters to Mr. Farrell and told him the story. And so since that day, you know, Mr. Farrell would say, you know what, if we're going to keep a customer happy, what's, what is the difference in giving him a few extra pickles? Like give him the pickle, just give him the pickle. And, and if that, if that keeps a customer happy and for us, it's a few cents, definitely not a quarter's worth of these sliced pickles that you get in an industrial sized jar. So Arthur, the way they translated to them is, you know, if they were working the ski lift and the ski lift closed at four o'clock and they said, if there's a a father and his son or or a family or even a group of people coming and they show up right at 401 and they're like, oh, can we just do one more run? Can we just get on? Like, give them the pickle. Let it, it costs us nothing to keep that, you know, lift open for an extra two minutes. Say, you know what? I'm going to let you go. It's after four and it makes somebody feel good. And yeah. you've, you've retained a customer. So I love that. So the give them, give them the pickle. I think that's a, it's a good mantra. If, yeah, if it's, it's put into context and not taken. <laughs> it's like, anything else. it's added value that costs nothing for you. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And I love that it was Farrell's. Arthur didn't really care that I was a Farrell's enthusiast as a child at Brooklyn Mall. Oh, my gosh. I can still hear the blasting of whatever, the instruments and the beating of the drum. And somebody would come out and be their birthday and they'd get the giant Sunday. It was in this, like, giant, of course, in in my mind, my youthful mind, it was a like a giant silver... Um, almost looked like a trophy. <laughs> it was that big, like a giant uh, cauldron of ice cream. It was probably like ended up th- being three scoops in real life, right? It, it just seemed so giant as a child. Yeah, I love those restaurants where they would sh- serve a giant communal dessert with like 20 spoons. And I rem- <laughs> You can't do that <laughs> I, nowadays. No, it's disgusting. It disgusting. But I remember like we would go out with all the first cousins to dinner and our grandparents. And to me, that was so magical. And I remember they would get this giant brownie sundae. Mm. And to me, that was also the size of like a human head. Yeah, it was like in a giant wine glass. Yes, the glass. Yeah, like a trifle bowl or something. (laughs) It was. Oh, and it was so warm on the bottom. It was a heated, warm Sunday. Yes. Oh. Oh, that sounds so good. <laughs> Let's share Again, that. Worth, worth the Let's stomach get one issues. Of those share it. <laughs> worth the lactose. Yeah. Well, speaking of restaurants, I I think we both agree that there should be some sort of state or federal mandate that every person in their lifetime should have to work for a certain period of time as a server in a restaurant. I think or that any, or any capacity, or Aaron, any capacity. Was, a, Aaron yeah. was a bus boy. You right. Know? No, no, right. So sorry, not just a server, but has to work in the service industry. Let me say, because you then take on a newfound approach to just not only dealing with people on a daily basis and showing grace and gratitude, but also when you go to a restaurant and you realize how many people it takes to get your food to the table, uh, it's quite an ordeal. And I was, I mean, I worked, I don't want to brag, but I was, (laughs) I worked at, (laughs) you know, the snackery at Brandeis for, for a year or two. And then my, one of my roommates and I worked at TCBY which used to be this can't be yogurt, and then they changed it to the country's best yogurt. I'm not sure what the problem was with this can't be yogurt. They didn't want 
their title to be or their name to be starting with denial. Um, and <laughs> after I can't we believe were, it's not butter. I can't believe it's not butter. I can't believe it's not yogurt. Nobody believes me. Um, but after working there two weeks, we got immediately promoted to assistant managers because we, we were the not. longest lasting staff, apparently. Yes. <laughs> after two weeks. Yeah. It was so much fun. And then, um, yeah, eventually I just did babysitting because that was the best way to make money. But when I was, when I graduated from grad school, was living in Chicago and needed to pay my rent and had no other source of income, I talked my way into a server position at a restaurant. If anybody has ever been to Chicago or lives there, it's called Tempo and it's still there. It's in a different, it's actually moved across the street from where it was, but I was living in a building on the corner of State and Chestnut with my roommate Stacy and Tempo was literally across the street. So it, you know, the opportunity was quite literally staring me in the eye every day. And as I was looking for a full-time job, I went in there and I filled out an application. It's a 24 hour diner. They're known for most known for it's a Greek diner, but most known for serving their eggs and omelets in a skillet. So they serve Ooh. like a, a, a traditional skillet, um, stainless steel skillet to your, to your table, which is awesome. And a lot of those cast iron, you mean? No, not cast iron. It was like stainless. It was, it's, oh. it's like a silver, it's like an old beat up skillet looking skillet. Okay. Okay. And, uh, and a lot of the staff there is, you know, are lifers. I mean, they've been working there in the industry for 30, and you 40 look years. Greek. And you I, look yeah, Greek. so I've got a Greek look to me. That's good. I look Sephardic and Greek. The, yeah. the dark hair. Um, so I went in, I filled out application. I'm talking to the manager. He's like, well, how much experience have you had as a waitress or, you know, and I said, um, and I start listing those tangential experiences to the actually pure restaurant industry. But I said, you know, really, it's been, I, I've had at least 20 years experience. I, I'm good. He goes, oh, okay. So, uh -oh. so uh, the first week, actually, the whole like three months or so that I worked there was, was probably a total disaster. Besides, I thought that my personality could overcome whatever lack of experience I had. Let me, let me assure you, it cannot. So there's lots of rules, right? There's like lots of rules. Like where are you carry a plate where how you put it down and how you take it away all that exactly stuff. like people actually need i don't know silverware to eat their food that's like so picky why do they need silverware <laughs> all the time they i just, just need a strewn and yeah, that's they all. just need a strewn we're passing out strewns and there's <laughs> we're gonna throw in a a, a strew knife which is gonna be <laughs> the, the opposite end you can use to cut they yes there's a hot side did you know this? there's a hot side of the plate Yes, I did which is that. like 90% of it. And then there's the little one inch cold side, which you're supposed to have. I had like blisters on my fingers. I don't know. And you're supposed to know because of like, there's a, you tell it by like, you put it at an angle that they, you know, like two o'clock is always the cold side. I didn't know this. I couldn't carry more than two plates at a time. And they're all, you can picture like having the plates layered on their like, arms and going through the restaurant like and navigating act. around people. Yeah. Navigating around strollers and old people and all this. And I'm like one or two plates at a time. And I'm holding the hot side. I'm going hot, 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 hot. here, hot, and then take like it, five minutes later, it. they're like, ma'am, ma miss, ma I'm like, yes. They're like, can we get some silverware? I'm like, again, with the silverware. <laughs> and People. Well, finally, the manager called, Needy. called me out. He's like, Allison, Allison, what is wrong with you? You told me you had 20 years of experience in restaurants. I go, and I do. He goes, how is that possible? I go, look, I'm 23 24 years old, I can guarantee you my parents have been bringing me to eat in restaurants since I was at least two or three. Okay. And I walked away. He goes, that is not what I'm anyway. Oh so. my God. That is quite a lie. <laughs> it was, you know, I think I, I wasn't trying to lie. I was just saying it sort of nonchalantly. Right, I mean, how did he think I had 20 years experience? I was maybe, 24 years old. Maybe you look old. I maybe. don't know. <laughs> <laughs> maybe I look old. Yeah. So I worked at this place called Rebecca's Cafe, and this was when I was in Boston. And I worked there because my friend Alana from camp, who also went to school in Boston, worked there. And it was with all these cool college kids. So I was like, I want to work there too. But they put me at the location that was near the hospital instead of the location <laughs> that was near all the kids. So I worked, who, I don't know, I, I worked with a whole different crew of people who were like, 
that's what they did for a living, right? They weren't like college kids. So like this is where they were. And I was this college kid who was always happy. And the guy who made, and I did, you did everything. Like I made coffee and it was counter service. I made coffee, I made salads, I helped make sandwiches, but there are guys who are dedicated to like really making the food out back. And um, this one guy just didn't like me. He yelled at me once and said, why do you always have to be so damn happy, Amanda? And wow. it's just like, I guess it was just my bitter. demeanor. And yeah, and I would, you would have to go, we had Snapple and you would have to go and refill all the refrigerators with Snapple and whatever drinks they had. And you'd have to go down these stairs to this basement that was like, had a very low ceiling. And I always hit my head. I would like get up really quick and hit my head. And one day I hit my head three times so, (laughs) so hard that it knocked me back down. Like I, I, I hit my head and I fell down. Um, and I took myself to the emergency room and did you have a concussion? I didn't No, I really thought I did. But then another time my, my register got stuck and (laughs) it was in the middle of like busy time. And the, uh, assistant manager came over to help me and she didn't like me either because I was always happy and she was always not happy. And she, she took this knife to try and unstick the cash register and it like, it, she like moved her hand real quickly and it cut me oh! and I go, ow. And her first response was your arm shouldn't have been there anyway. Oh gosh. <laughs> I know that time. Did you have to go back to the emergency room? You're probably, thank God they put you at the one next to the hospital. You needed it. Right. It was all, oh my God. I don't know why they don't like happy people. <laughs> they all wanted to murder me. <laughs> back to the ER. The right. happy girl's back. She needs stitches. Right. I was like, this is not this is not going to work because meanwhile, they wanted everyone to leave and I wanted to offer everyone more pickles, more pickles. (laughs) Just give them the pickles. Darn it. Well, thanks for listening to the latest episode of Sis and Tell podcast. Don't forget to share us with your friends and your family. And when you have a pickle, think of us. As always, (laughs) that sounds bad. As always, this has been Foxy Lady and Allison with a whole lot of talk about a whole lot of nothing. We'll catch you next time.